everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show here. And don't forget that registration is open for the Forensic Photography Symposium, January 17th, the 20th, 2022. If you are a forensic uh, photography expert and you're working with a digital camera to document evidence, this is gonna be the symposium for you. Also, don't forget that abstracts are still open. So if you wanna submit an abstract or a presentation, they are due on, or the, the abstract deadline is due on November 30th. Uh, with me today, I have David Laragibel, and he has a significant amount of experience photographing at post-mortem examinations. And David, first off, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I have to ask you, um, what kinds of issues do you find at post-mortem examinations, at autopsies, and how do you get around some of these things? Uh, well, the... The main environmental issue in photographing a uh, post-mortem examination is that we're working in a very wet and reflective environment. Um, everything from the tissues to uh, the surfaces that uh, the examination is being conducted on cause a lot of specular reflections. So we have to constantly be fighting against those, uh, those issues. We have a lot of highlights in, in our photos. Uh, the, the reflections can, uh, can interfere with contrast and saturation. So it's just that's been the constant battle. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in terms of the examination itself, um, the decedents, when they come in, they're in various states of uh, disposition. In some cases, they have died within a few hours, and in other cases, they've died um, months ago. And so we are trying to find, uh, constantly trying to find ways of getting past those uh, decompositional effects um, in order to find everything from any identifying features to evidence of the cause of death or a, any incidental findings. We're working against um, reflections. We're working against competing contrast and tone. So primarily uh, our go-to has been cross-polarization. So that's where we're leveraging uh, the light source, um, a controllable light source and uh, using a linear polarizing gel and in addition to that, we're applying a circular polarizing filter to our uh, DSLR cameras, and we're effectively trying to tune out um, the reflections in the tissues uh, or any evidence that, uh, that we may need to photograph. So in addition to that, uh, we've also uh, started using, well, we've been using for quite some time, uh, infrared, uh, reflected infrared and reflected ultraviolet photography. Mostly infrared, uh, reflect, reflected ultraviolet uh, is, brings its own host of issues, uh, but reflected uh, infrared is still something that's quite easy to, uh, to deploy both uh, in the lab and in the field. Uh, and with that, we're, we're able to discover everything from uh, clandestine injury to uh, tattoos that have been obscured through uh, decompositional artifacts. Um, we're able to find uh, firearm discharge residue on dark clothing we're able to find uh, uh, blood patterns uh, in the clothing that, that we're also photographing. So the, the, the combination of all these different uh, modalities has really been um, kind of, when we take a step back and look at the entire investigation holistically, uh, they're all kind of part and parcel. You know, we traditionally it's been just white light and everybody thinks of photography as just working in white light, but um, we're trying to expand that to to think in all uh, all the spectra that we have available to us. Excellent. Well, I know that there's a ton of information there. And actually, for that reason, for those that are listening, you actually have a little bit more time. You're going to be presenting for about an hour or so uh, during the symposium. So I'm very much looking forward to all of the stuff you're going to be bringing to the table here. So, David, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.